Welcome to the Town of Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner meeting for November 16th, 2022. The time is 6 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting. Uh, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person and uh, remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while a, an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For pur purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will ho host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Um, there is remote participation information and links noted on the agenda, which can be found on the Town of Deerfield website near the calendar uh, for the Select Board, Board of Health meeting tonight. There's a toll free number if you'd like to call in and participate, which is 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580 and the passcode is 570012. Um, people should mute and you can do that by hitting star six on landlines or just mute your Zoom until um, you'd like to speak and just state your name and where you're from. And uh, so we'll call the meeting to order. We have public comment. Uh, if anybody would like to make any comments on any agenda items that are listed tonight, we also have a hearing for a liquor license, just change of officers. That'll that'll be kicking off at 615. So if there's any public comment on anything on the agenda tonight, happy to listen. Hi, Deborah. Um hi, well, I just <laughs> Good evening. Hello, everybody. I just wanted to um, thank you for posting the anti-hate statement, which um, looks good and uh, it's great. And there was a lot of work and thought put into it. And so um, I and I know other people appreciate it. And then I just wanted to make a, a comment just to support the ad hoc committee um, moving forward. And I know you're going to be talking about that. And yeah. um, and reviewing the description. So um, yeah, excited to see that on the agenda and moving forward. Great, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Any other comments tonight? Hearing none, um, we can move on to a little business before 6.15 in our hearing. Um, do, we, uh, do you have any select board announcements that you want to? I, I, I do actually, I okay. just want to thank Tim, uh, thank you, Tim. and uh, Peter Thomas and oh, yeah. Fred um, back for putting up the cake. Yeah, our 350th cake is out in front of the and, and Joe Comerford for again for let you know working really hard with us to get the spot on DOT land. It looks to great. Have the cake up. We will be lighting it, you know, in 2023, but Having yeah. it up before the winter is fabulous. Yeah. Um, I do want to say that um, the ICS, we're doing incident command system training uh, for volunteers, and I'm hoping people will come out. Um, this is a really um, important training to understand how we will respond and who we respond to. And it's November 21st, 6 to 8, December 5th, six to eight at the South Deerfield Fire Station. And we're gonna be doing spontaneous um, volunteer management and you know how we make sure that we don't leave anybody behind in our communities and how we um, respond to um, emergencies. So that's really huge. And then the other thing that happened today, I just wanna say, guess what? We won or we were picked by the American Planning Association um, for our soil health, we were awarded the Sustainability and Resiliency Award. And Very I, nice. nice job. I know, I'm so and, excited. And what is the stipend I, for that? I know, yeah. right? I know. Well, I asked, I asked if there was any other entries. <laughs> and, and I was assured it was a, nas a prestigious national um, contest, and, and there was a lot of entries in ours won, so. Anywhere near I'm, the Powerball number? Yeah, no. no, no. I'm, I'm hoping that we can 
parlay it into some yeah. good, good you know, publicity some playing and, yeah, yeah. some other grant money. But anyway, we One got step. the award. Good. The award um, is going to be December 9th down in New Bedford. All right. And, which is a Friday. Like a so down. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> down, but whatever. Anyway, it was a wonderful thing. Good. That's great. Yeah. So that was kind of exciting. Very nice. That's it. That's okay. all I have. Anything else? Do you have anything to hit on? I don't know. Cody? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yep. The mail-in flyer. Mail flyer. Yes. Yeah. So there, um, uh, Casey was kind of reminding me to, to talk about the uh, vote by mail instructions. And this is for our December 6th ballot uh, election, which would be for the um, debt exclusion on the library project. I think that's the only article, only item on the on the on the item, but you um, you can vote by mail. Um, there is uh, ballots must be returned to the drop box um, or the local election office and must be delivered by 8 p.m. on December 6, 2022. Mail, ba mail ballots must be postmarked by December 6, 2022. So if people are, you know, still are going to be away or something or, you know, so concerned about COVID and gathering, they, they can certainly do a mail-in uh, ballot. And there's a, there's a flyer here. I assume it's out somewhere and we can post it online or it may already be up on the, exactly. on the clerk's website, um, the town website on just steps on how to, how to do it. You know how to mark your ballot and and sign your ballot envelope and return your ballot. So, um, you know that's it. That's a. I'm sorry, the notice is up. I don't know if they. The whole instruction. Yeah, okay, I at least think, the notice, is up, notice and is up. And if anyone has any questions, um, you know the UPS Postal Service recommends mailing your ballot at least one week before election day. So we're getting close. You know, it's not that long away till um till December sixth. But also, please come out December sixth, obviously, and and about, and um, and you can vote in person as well. So I don't think there's early voting other than mail in, correct? I think it's just mail. I think it's just mail in. And just a couple of questions, and if you have the answers, Casey, that would be great. Um, if you have signed up in the past for a mail in ballot, this will automatically go to your home. I believe so. And um, I think Carlene told me that. Yeah, and I, I have seen the electronic notification that shows that the uh, sam the a sample ballot and uh, so forth. So yes, um, and right. you can drop these she off. Specifically said you would see it, so I think yes, that's the case. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> uh, you did a mail -in yeah, ballot. and I note that you can drop it off in the uh, drop box in the foyer of the town hall as well. Yes. Yep, yep, that's great. Yeah, so please come out and vote. It's a, you know, large item for the town and everybody needs their voice heard. So please, please come out and vote. Great. Thank you for doing that, Trevor. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, you want to just hit our minutes real quick? Sure. Uh, so I would make a motion to approve the minutes of October 7th, 2020. And the, I just have to say, these minutes really like started triggering me because they're all in November, right? When we're dealing with COVID. So every one of them is like just brought back for rough memories. Um, anyways, October 7th, 2020. I'll second that. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. And then um, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes for November 17th, 2020. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All yeah. those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then I'll make a motion for November 18th. Look at one right after the other two. I, know. <laughs> I think we have the 20th in here too. We, were, we yeah. were really busy. It was uh, November 18th, 2020. Um, I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. And then um, November 19th, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. And then we have December 2nd, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. Um, I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you again for the minutes. That's super. It just makes me really happy to get those, you know, <laughs> done and caught up and it's, it's a ways back and it's really great to kind of get them done and in the well, in the books i mean 
go on. It just shows how busy we were. Oh, yeah. I mean, a rough, rough time. It was rough. Yeah. And thanks to Alex for yes. working so hard on those. Although Absolutely. he's not here, I'm so proud of him. Yep. Very, I just texted been, him and told him that. <laughs> super, super helpful. He's just been amazing. Uh, amazing. I see him every office, helping everywhere. Yes. And um, we still need We're to get so into school, though, right? Of it. We are we are having those conversations. <laughs> yeah, he's been great. So um, we've got a couple more minutes. Um, I could do a board of health announcement. Okay, let's do that. Um, home, we had Homeland Security meetings yesterday, and um, all the hospitals are in tier two surge um, because there just are no pediatric beds anymore for influenza or RS. Um, the, you know, the respiratory, upper respiratory um, virus. So it's not really, co COVID is steady mm -hmm. and stable, which means it's still circulating. But oh, yeah. what is really happening is that the upper respiratory diseases, both the flu, which we've ha never had this early and this much of the numbers are just overwhelming uh, up mm -hmm. and down the valley. And then also this RSV, people are truly sick. And so all I can say is please wash your hands. Um, if you don't feel well, stay home. Um, and if, if you're feeling comfortable in a too close of a space with other people that you normally don't mix with, you know, just put on your mask. It won't, yeah, it won't hurt. For sure. So anyway, um, just be careful for the holidays. Yeah. We have, we anticipate a surge after the holidays oh, and we nice. anticipate a surge after Christmas, but you know, if we're already in a surge mode and the hospitals are moving patients around because there's no beds, it's pretty serious. Already. Yeah, we're gonna. I mean, this is when you talk here. about this is you know, uh, yeah. COVID. What was happening in COVID? Right. This is what's happening right now with the flu and. Yep. Um, and if you haven't gotten your flu shot, please get your flu shot. W what happens with the flu shot? It's not going to help you from getting sick. But what happens is, it, think of about it as a bad guy on a wanted poster. It, your immune system sees that guy, that virus trying to get in, and they recognize it, and they're going to attack it. If it's a variant, you know, the guy puts bad guy puts on a mustache, cuts his hair, or colors <laughs> his hair. It, they might sneak in, but then there's a chance that there could rec your body could recognize it again, your immune system. So. Any time that you have the flu shot or the COVID vaccine, or it, it gives you a little bit of an edge and it's really, really worth it and you won't be as sick. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, it's not a force field, but nobody wants to be as sick and be hospitalized. So please yeah, try to get your vaccines and stay up to date. Absolutely. Great message That's it. for sure. Okay. Well, we're at 6.15. I'm going to um, read the message and by the time that's done, we are in the hearing. So uh, this is a town of select board, office of the select board, um, board of health, town of Deerfield, um, notice of public hearing pursuant to general law, chapter 138, section 15, and Deerfield general bylaws, chapter 247. The Deerfield select board, board of health, as a local licensing authority, will hold a public hearing on November 16th, 2022 at 615 p.m. on an application for a change of officers at one Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass, from Circle K, Massachusetts, LLC. Documents are on file for public review in the, at the municipal offices during regular business hours and on the town uh, town's website at www.deerfieldma.us. Meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, 01373. The remote participation, I will read because it could be slightly different, is um, US, uh, there's a toll-free number of 833-548-0276. You can also join the meeting online through the, um, through the link, which is identical to this meeting. So if you're in the meeting already, you're here. Um, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode, again, is 570012. So um, I declare the hearing is open. And I did see the application, and I think... Talking with Casey, everything is in order, correct? Yes. And who's here representing Circle K tonight? Uh, good evening. My name is Tyler Hensler. 
Uh, I'm an attorney. I'm an attorney at uh, Upton Connell in Devlin here in Boston. Uh, happy to be here even, even virtually um, uh, on behalf of Circle K Massachusetts LLC, uh, doing business as Circle K located at uh, I believe one Greenfield Road in Deerfield. That was a bit confusing for me. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 if it's helpful, I, I can just briefly summarize what's being done here. Um, sure. Uh, I know you've looked at the application, but uh, we're here for a change in LLC manager. Um, Mr. James Barris is being removed as manager of the LLC uh, and is being replaced by Mr. David Ser Serodeshko. Um, also, Melissa Duncan, Kathy Cunnington, and Valerie Zamuner are being added as signatories for the LLC. Uh, the important thing to note is that there are no operational changes going to be happening at the Circle K location, uh, and there's no change in the uh, upper tier ownership structure that has previously been approved by this board. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, and, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I think everything's been in, in good order at this facility and we no complaints. Yep. We're in really good shape. I just what, did have one question. Sure. I mean, I noticed uh, if I'm correct, there's a Circle K that's actually in the, the adjacent town. This is a this is a, a LLC wide change, right? It's just you're coming to us to ask for approval for this specific location or? No, no, that, I, it is confusing because uh, uh, Location specific uh, application is a change in manager uh, and the confusion comes in that LLC, you know, CEOs and officers are called managers. So while both are called manager change, this is an LLC wide uh, uh, application. So we've, we've been going, I've actually been in, in uh, you know, Western Mass, Got uh, it. you know, town halls uh, pretty, pretty frequently over the past couple of weeks. So we just have to go to every location and, and uh, you know, pay respect to the, the communities we serve. Yeah, I just I thought that was the case. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, thank sure. you. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Any other questions? No, no. Just um, want to emphasize that, you know, tips training and, you know, uh, just making sure that no underage sales occur is really important to us. Yep. Very important to Circle K as well. Thank you. Yep. As, thank as you. should be anyone that holds a Section 15 license. Absolutely. Yep. Just want um, to make that comment. Thank you. If there's no other comments, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Um, seeing no other issues, I entertain a motion to approve the, the change in um, manager. I'll make I make that motion. Oh, I'll second it then. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great, we'll sign this here. So we're now down just to the change order, right? Yeah, yep. Signature there. Thank you very much, Tyler. Appreciate the info and attending tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Casey will get you a copy of this, I guess. Yep. So we're all Sounds set. great. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Um, so moving on, we've got, um, yeah, change order for uh, change order number eight, um, which would be the, um, so for the wastewater treatment plant last meeting, which was the monthly meeting, we talked about um, well, a couple couple months ago, actually, we talked about um, when Eric Meals came on as manager and operations chief. There, he he had recognized the need for we, we have an um, I'll call it an outfluent. <laughs> there's also an effluent. There's two. There's an in and an out samplers, yeah, yeah. and we don't have an in sampler like an effluent sampler when it comes in the line. And he thought it would be a good time, and it would be a good time to do one that matched, so all parts are the same. Everything is identical. So um, they looked into that over the last couple of months to see what the lead time would be and all that kind of stuff. And they've lined that up and they're gonna, um, so this was a change order to have Waterline install that while they're doing the, so that they can take samples right off the bat uh, when stuff comes I, in. I'm actually really um, in support of that because yeah. 
you know, other virus monitoring, mm -hmm. um, PFAS monitoring, what, I mean, who knows what comes down the road. Right. Yep. It makes sense to have this available to yep. us. So yep. I'm uh, supportive of yeah. that. Yeah. And, and we want to, you know, use up obviously our grant money and, and this is a perfect uh, opportunity to do that. So this, we'll use that for that. The other, oh, go ahead. There are paving elements too. There are. The second item is, is the temporary paving for, um, for the winter. So that, you know, we've really dug up and cut up and smashed up the entryway coming in. So we're going to pave out to the tel first telephone pole um, and put binder down and, and pave that section to kind of keep it clean and easier to plow this winter. Um, and again, it's one of those things where it, it really needs to be done. You could wait and just make a muddy mess all through winter, but we just think it's better to put a base down. Again, we need to use up some of the grant money anyways. It's just a perfect you know, it's a perfect use for that and, um, and to make it safe and clean. And Kevin is here to talk about it as well. Kevin was at the meeting too. How are you, Kevin? You're muted. You're, you're muted there. there we go. Hello. <laughs> Good. Hey there. No, doing well, thanks. Good. Does that make sense? We're just going to... Yes. Yes, it does. And, and presently right now, we've got it where I can get him either uh, Monday or Tuesday. Perfect. Next week, because basically Thursday of next week, most all the plants are shut down. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's why we're jamming um, the next three days. We're going to be finishing off uh, River Road, too. So we got, we'll got we be doing Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yep. Um, hopefully, we don't have to be there on Monday. But Yeah. So, um, so, so I'll just make a motion to approve it. Okay. So, the yeah, the change you order. two separate motions? Um, well, there's one change order. No, that's fine. One change order is good. And let me just get the amount here. It's for uh, $40,352.63. This is change order number eight. Um, okay. So say that number again. 40, it's $40,352.63. And that includes... So that's for both. Of them. That's for both items. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 12639 for the for the uh, effluent. And then the uh, paving is $27,713.44. I mean, it seems reasonable. Yeah. Um, it's actually a good chunk of paving. There's actually a big one. Right. Well, when you come in, and there is. I mean, because it, it, it was, it's, it's nasty. It needs to be done. Yeah. 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 No, I, I agree. So, so, are they putting down a layer of hard pack and then putting a, a coat of asphalt? Yes. Yeah, they're 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 milling it down and they're doing a reclaim. Um, okay. you know, they'll be adding in some gravel, leveling everything out, and then um, doing a binder. And, and I think it's only just a, a winter binder yep. to get them through, which is which is good because that gives you the winter for things to settle in the whole nine areas before you go ahead right. and do your top coat. So okay, yeah, winter is always kind of nice. You can actually do it all over again, but right, right, yeah, and, it's and more the, permanent. I think this. In fluent sampler yeah. i mean it's over ten thousand dollars for the sampler it's only yep. three hundred dollars to install yeah but over the lifetime of 40 years it makes total sense yeah we don't know what's coming down the line it was a good catch by eric you know yeah. he's like look yeah this is the time to do it when you're doing this he didn't yeah. see it in the plan we just it was an oversight when we were doing this. exactly and so, you got yeah. like you said you're going to need it because there's going to be other testing it's going to be coming in and yep. and it's you might as well just be ahead of the game because it's just yep. not that far away and it'll, um, it'll match so everything. I would make a motion to support the change order for $40,352.63. And I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Thank you very much. Um, while we have Kevin here, um, the next item here is the um, DES paving. And the question is, should we use ARPA funds or another fund? I think uh, I'm not going to look to Casey. Don't look at me. <laughs> um, um, so <clears throat> I know you had some questions. I don't know if you got a chance to see that. Um, there's a map of where we were looking to do some winter paving, and I'm still praying that we can get this done before they close. Is that the idea, Kevin? For DES? You're Kevin, you're oh, muted. you're muted again. All right. Yeah, uh, probably the beginning of the week is what we're looking at. Um, cause once again, you know, the end of the end of the week, you know, uh, everything's closed. Right. Kevin, you know, do you feel like, I mean, it's been a while since I was there. Um, do you feel like this is enough 
you know, do you want to go around the curve or do you feel like the round the curve is? No, round, I, I think the roundabout is good because that that's all in decent shape. It's just basically from there out to the beginning of the, where the basketball court comes in, you know, yeah. and that whole area where the, um, going up into the school by the um, uh, boiler room. And then they've also got that little garage that's right there. That whole area right there is just completely destroyed. It is, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and be honest with you, and this is, this is a, this is a temporary fix, it you is. know, because no, when, when you think about the whole thing, you know, we're looking at, you know, the, the numbers we got from a few weeks ago is going to be around 550,000. We're going to be looking at for yeah. just paving that um, DES next year. I so know, that's going to be a capital item. Let's go on. Yep. No. Um, so really the main thing is, is so really the, the other side of it and the curve is not bad. It's the one along that, yeah. um, section because of where the, um, the flower garden is there, the, uh, rain, rain garden, that whole side, the, uh, pavement is just kind of broken away. So they had no real support. So he's going to widen that a bit, I think, and just kind of reclaim the edge and beef it up. So, um, cause that was only designed as a fire fire lane gonna, that's it right. it's not designed for you know 150 yeah. cars a day plus right um kevin are you going to be able to um have this shed the water um adequately i mean is it going to be slanted enough no there's going to be a really big puddle in the middle um, yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll make sure that it gets uh okay. it gets shut off the proper way obviously we're going to try and put it towards the rain garden that way the the rain yeah. garden can do what it's supposed to do by its filtering okay. system. I just How's wanted that? to make sure it was going to filtrate and hold the water. Yep. Yeah, okay. that's understood. That's fine. I would make a motion. To well, you. before we do that, oh. I have some questions. Sure. Um, sure. So um, I understand that there's some question about how we're going to pay for this and allocate, you know, so is this the appropriate time to talk about that yes. or do we do that afterwards? No, nope, right now. Yeah, because we want to talk about so, where we're going to get it. My understanding is that DES is offered to pay a percentage of this is it seven thousand fixed or is yeah. it half? They they said half, so they were they were going to pay half. I I can't remember if they did seven or half because they were we were thinking it was about fourteen. About and fourteen. It it may be a little less than that, but we were figuring around fourteen. And um, <clears throat> when I went to the school committee meeting the other night to talk to them about it and talk about some of the other capital items that they are coming up on their projects. Um, I requested that maybe we could split this together. Um, they offered to do that. They approved it from their end. So they, they've already voted it. And I said, I would take it back to us and try to figure out where we want to pull the money from. Do we want to do a, a request from, um, from reserve? Um, Brenda brought up using ARPA. I, you know, I'm I hate to whittle about away about the ARPA, but for seven thousand dollars, let's just get it. Um, well, my my question was, um, I actually do not like the idea of using ARPA funds just mm -hmm. willy nilly. Um, I know that it's probably a, a, an expense that can be justified, but what's the alternative to this? Um, you have, can you do the work and then ask for a, a transfer at the end of the year? Sure. Yep. yep. Um, so there's no, there's no issue with that, right? No. no so no, no. that would be my preference is yeah. just to do this in a That's normal fine. process yep. um, and, and leave the ARPA money. In. Yeah, I agree. And it, it would be nice to maybe give Julie a heads up that we, because so one of the issues is, is that in years past, I don't know if it was when Julie was on or just getting on, um, there were times where we had kind of planned on doing stuff, but hadn't really given the, plan, the finance committee a heads up that we were going to ask for this. So I don't know. I mean, I would like to just give her a heads up that this would be a request for this specific item at the end coming of the year. Through, but I think it makes sense to do that. I'm yeah. with that too. Jason. So Hello. I had a, um, Kevin, bear with me. So two things. This is a special situation. Um, certainly not anticipated. And Kevin does have a special projects line to cover, you know, things that come up. Mm -hmm. But this is also functionally an accessibility issue mm -hmm. and we need to get it taken care of. Yep. And so I think from those perspectives, particularly Kevin, um, it's totally explainable mm -hmm. um, in terms of warning Julie. Just to give her a heads up. I told, uh, no, I think yeah. we warn everybody, but we yeah. say, look, this is accessibility. We have got to comply. Yeah. And I'm that's sure what we put a hundred thousand dollars away for. Right. 
Um, that's the reason I was thinking this might be a, diff a better way to do it, Kev. And I didn't get a chance to talk to you because it came up at like quarter of six. Um, yeah, I, I don't yeah. care where the money comes from. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. I'm not I'm picking. Not, you don't think finance committee is going to say no to, no, to no. an accessibility I just, issue? I just, out of, I out of due you. deference, I just wanted yeah. to make sure that- Oh, were, yeah. You and know, I'll see all. Julie on, I, I would prefer to send, do you want to send, do you want me to send an email or do you want to send an email, Kevin? If you could, Morning. and then just see me in it. Okay. I'll do that. Yeah, okay. and I also think that um, we want to replenish your budget if that's where you have yeah. to do it short term, you know, empty your coffers, yeah. you know, the money you're going to need through the winter. So absolutely. Um, we, Kevin, um, absolutely. If you need coal patch money or something, it's not like we can't send this request to finance committee and ask them to act in January. We, we also right. should be right. getting pothole money. I think there, there's going to be some pothole money coming. No, no, pothole money is already spent. It's yeah, that's going down on River Road. Every every penny every, of it, every penny, every penny of it has already been spent. No wrap money. Well, zero. Kevin always done a very good job of coming in a very slim budget. There's never any excess. So again, if he does, you know, I just think it makes sense to replenish Absolutely. that from a transfer. I agree, I agree with you. Okay, so and I'm I'll, happy to reach out to Julian okay. and talk to her. Yep. Cool. And thanks, Kevin, for sending this. Uh, saved us a trip over to the school so oh yeah. sure no certainly yeah. well as soon as you as soon as you said i look i'm going oh i just rip it out something real quick so great and yep. i think um and then we do i'm, I'm i know on we the still schedule need here to vote that we want to yes okay so so i will make that motion to um authorize kevin to go forward with the paving okay and no. then we'll use it do a transfer later in the year mm -hmm. that's fine and i'll second that any further discussion all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all very much for that. Excellent. Um, Thank you. Kevin, you got my voicemail the other day about there was one other crack. Um, yeah, in the back. I should mention yep. in the back. Yes. Okay. Yep. Just want to make sure you got that. Good. Thank you for that. Thanks for hitting on that. And we do, you know, I know we'll get into talking about this when we get to capitals, but there is, you know, a larger area that we've had, you know, issues with safety and ADA accessibility. Oh, so. Um, and then the other paving is a, is a mess everywhere there, but um, okay. So that's that. Um, next item is the uh, Human Rights Ad Hoc Commission. Do you want to, Kim, do you need sure. to um, set aside some time to work with people? On yeah. That? So, you know, on our last meeting, we decided that, uh, that I would work with um, some of the people interested in creating uh, an ad hoc committee invitation. And uh, so we successfully completed that. I just thought I would read what we came up with and if there's wording that we need to change. Sure. Um, so formation of an ad hoc committee to advise select board on creation of a human rights committee. The town of Deerfield seeks community members to participate in an ad hoc committee to explore the creation of a human rights committee for the town and to share findings and recommendations with the select board. An advisory committee on human rights can help Deerfield comply with laws against discrimination based on race, religion, ethnic background, national origin, ability, gender identity, or sexual orientation. The advisory committee would provide an advocacy for protecting the rights of town residents, share resources, education, and guidance, promote inclusion and equity, provide a forum for addressing discrimination and racism, and celebrate diversity. The ad hoc committee will be charged with collecting information about the function, purpose, makeup, and structure of a human rights committee and we'll explore how a human rights committee can be beneficial to the town of Deerfield. The ad hoc committee will meet at mutually convenient times for the committee members and is expected to deliver its findings and recommendations to the select board in February 2023. Residents interested in serving on the ad hoc committee should have an interest in anti-discrimination and anti-racist work and should submit an email or letter explaining their interest to Chris Nolan, the assistant town administrator. Uh, his email address is ata at town.deerfield.ma.us by December 5, 2022. Select board members will then review the letters of interest and appoint the ad hoc committee members. Yeah, I like it. Good. So. Kind of explains exactly what we're trying to do and gives people a good understanding when they apply what we're doing. And yeah, I'd just like to thank um, Sean Durrett and uh, Deborah Yaffe for working uh, so quickly on this thank process. Thank you very much. Yeah, really thank you, Deb. It's good. Um, great. So you just need to, uh, we don't need to vote this. You just have a consensus. I think we should vote. All right. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, the, the 
wording of this uh, invitation is written. And I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. I just, I feel better if we have an official vote. Perfect. Yeah. No worries at all. Um, okay, so. Okay, so we have um, we have an entertainment license for the Tilton Library uh, for review and approval. This is their annual um, application for, you know, they do functions all year long there, you know, music programs, all kinds of different things. And um, we waive the fee and um, have an application for entertainment license. I will make a motion we approve um, the entertainment license for the year for the Tilton Library. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? I just wanted to clarify, um, this is for the duration to the end of the year, is yes. that correct? Yes. Yep. We hadn't received one of these. We, we didn't realize oh. that they had, yeah. they had been doing some entertainment activities. Mm -hmm. um, so we notified Candace that she should fill out the paperwork, but it's oh. really a formality. Um, I thought so, they did it last year too. No, I don't. I asked Pat about it, and she didn't recall huh. him having it. So, I remember and it doing this it. isn't abnormal. It's just not right. something we had advised them of because we didn't realize it over here. Huh. Okay, so well, we're not we're not again. trying to make anything difficult. We just want to make sure we have tracking. Perfect. And so we may have one of these early we, next we year. We may see another one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For the year. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great, thank you very much. Um, so we have proposed FY 2024 cost of living adjustments. I know Casey uh, met with the personnel board. They're starting to kind of get a hearing together to kind of decide on that. We need to start thinking about it for our budgeting. Well, that's the thing. Well. So the personnel, the personnel bylaw requires that the, that each time the class comp plan gets adjusted, a hearing be held mm -hmm. for consideration of what the adjustment will be. So you have several different examples and a reflection of what the October Northeast Consumer Price Index numbers are. And so my conversation with the personnel board was, okay, you've got two and a half percent to 5%. Um, really, when we placed everyone on the new version of the comp plan where we changed the steps and, mm -hmm. and grades, there wasn't as much of an increase as some of the other, as some other departments and some other towns had seen. So I asked the personnel board to consider, uh, look, I asked them to look at all the various iterations, but I said, I think no matter what they vote as a recommendation to you all, we won't, the rubber doesn't hit the road until the budgets. Correct. And I think. We really need to see how that shakes out. It, did, it, it's going to have to shake out. So did, I said to them two and a half to 3% seems like it could be reasonable based it, on what we know. Because there's already two and a half between steps right Correct. now. And, um, and that's why we kind of did this whole plan. And yes, we've been into it. We've, we've had a crazy couple of years for sure with inflation and just the whole marketplace has been really upside right. down. But um, um, my has, thought was, if we have three percent, it's a, it, it provides some element of retainage. But if that's not affordable, there's correct. other things the town can do. Yep, longevity, different things. Longevity, like that. different, different longevity. Recognizing that longevity, the consideration about what longevity looks like is different in this workplace, whereas 15 years ago. You could expect a person to stay for 15 or 20 years. Yeah, not Nowadays, that doesn't happen. Nope. Um, and there's other elements of the bylaw that could be addressed. Um, for instance, personal days. We get one person, most bylaw employees get one personal day. Right. But that's not standard in the market, particularly in Franklin and Hampshire County. So, right. you know, there's some elements of mm -hmm. change we could, we could make that would yep. help the employees. But somewhere... Two and a half to three percent is probably a reasonable did, start point. Did Brenda um, crunch any numbers yet? Not okay. yet. All right. I know she. You just got her this stuff this week. I just anyways, got it and... to her. I just had the conversation with personnel board. So I. So it's a good. The hearing's been set for about. the twelfth of okay. December. Good. At six thirty, 
um, bylaw employees are going to be notified. It's a Monday. Oh yeah. Um, bylaw employees will have a sticker on their payroll good. or their pay stubs. Yep. So they are aware. Okay, good. Um, and y'all are welcome to come if yep. you want to come. Um, yep. And if you want to come, let me know so we can post yeah, a meeting Yeah, I would just post you. it. Yeah, for sure. That um, way we can be there. Chris, did you hear that? We got to post a meeting. Um, <laughs> yes. I Thank just, you, Chris. I wanted the board to hear virtually the same information as they gave the personal mm -hmm. board. Good. That's good. Thank you. Um, the next item is uh, you've got capital projects on here. I do. And, oh, man, this is always the hard one. Like, what are we doing this year? We don't have any money. We don't have any money, but there's some critical items I wanted to bring to everybody's attention, if you wouldn't mind. Are we looking at FY24 column at this moment? We're looking at what's been done and what we could expect to see that's been carried forward. But okay, frankly, the reason I'm asking is capital projects are due December 1st. Capital, Carolyn, it's never, capital. never, it's way too early. It's way too early. It's always way too early. Um, I, I think, um, you know, the discussion of changing that was based on our timeline of an April town meeting right. and the normal budget process. We know we haven't had a normal budget process for a couple of years for sure. Yeah. And it's been wobbly for a few years before that. Um, so I think we should be thinking about seriously, Julie had brought that up yes. about moving the town meeting. And then this due date of December 1st, which is ridiculously early, yeah. but given the, all the fact that we have to do, it will allow us to move that date to like February 1st or mm. something. You know? So that's actually something that we had talked, I hadn't talked to Julie, but I had talked to Brenda right. about it. Yeah. Um, I think that's a reasonable way to move forward. Because but for now, this is what we're at. It's almost the last you know, thing we do. It is almost like, the last thing we do. Like what do we have for free cash, all that, and I mean, so it never is. If, if we move the due date to February 1st, what um, by, by our bylaws, who has to vote that or how, how, how do we functionally make so that we, happen? We, what we would do is we would put an article on town meeting to make a change to that particular section of that bylaw. Yeah. And maybe we don't do February 1st, maybe we do January 15th. Yeah. It gives us an extra 15 days, but it gives an extra month to people like me who are looking, who are hearing about projects and thinking right. about things we need to move forward with. Yeah, but this is always, I mean, it seems like we always spin our wheels for the first. We few spin months. our wheels. Yeah. My ex experience has been you spin your wheels but for about a month and a half. But the request yeah. coming in, like um, we're supposed to be done by December first. The school I know are working on theirs. They're working on. But um, you know, but everybody else is. We we also need to do that too. I'm just. December 1st just seems really early for that. That's why we're talking. Yeah, so I think. Um, and frankly, I probably should have brought it up at another meeting. I know, just, just so I, much with town meeting and all the other stuff we've been yeah. working on. Um, so I had a couple thoughts. Okay. I have not heard from everybody, but I do want to bring something up because it came up last year and I wanted to give an update. So we had talked about permit software a while ago. Yep. And last year I That's put a forward most. a request. Um, since we've had a change in personnel in that department, it's really become apparent. The feedback from Amy yeah. is that we really need it because time. it's wasting so much of her time it to is. do it. It's literally like a hunt and peck thing. It is. It's crazy. I talked to her about it. I said, oh, how things going? You know, do you like it here? What, how's it, what would you change? She said, online permitting. Yes. This is ridiculous. Why are why you know, we're so, back in the And Carolyn, you know, to recognize what Carolyn's comments were last year, it was we needed archive software. So because there's a correlating information tracking that goes on. And that's true, but I think if we could have concurrent projects mm -hmm. even at a smaller amount, Carolyn, for the archiving piece, if we could have some concurrent project, those two things, doing something concurrently, it'll take some of the pressure off of the hunt and peck right. sort of oh, no, approach and give us the beginnings of the archiving piece. Because I will say one thing, um, when we talk about moving the town hall, we have to move a lot of paper. And frankly, if we start archiving now, mm -hmm. we may not have to move as much paper. And There's a ton of paper over there. If we move there. into the 1888 building, it's a different space. It's going to be laid out differently. And yes, we have a meeting on Friday to talk about this. Thank you. Staff. Um, but 
functionally, if we can get a little ahead of it in terms of the archiving and the permitting, it's going to make the well, transition. Just the well, permitting it doesn't, it permitting it doesn't make sense not to be our, uh, not to move forward with the permitting. Yeah. I'm just saying that the expense to be, you know, we just have to be aware that if you're going to make it really work, it ha we have to do the old archiving of the old records. Well, point. we can get right. to that too, but I mean, I think like, she's like, the same people come in and I've got to start a whole new form. And when I can just hit a button and have it already auto it would, populated, their information would be populated. crazy. And then so yeah. we're building know, a, that's... we're building this while we work on an archive. I, I think that yeah. makes sense. And you know, to be honest, um, there are probably companies that can handle archiving stuff a lot better than we could um, have one person in an office who really doesn't do this. Yeah. Be in an arc, you know, archive situation. Now, uh, maybe they could be trained or whatever. But yeah. um, I'm in. It, that's a one-time expense to archive. I mean, you, you hire somebody, you Over do a it, of years. yeah, and you yeah. get it done. And then anything going forward, anything that she enters now into the permitting software, it's, it's there. there. It's there. Yeah. Yep. Um, Let's start now. And so one I, other no, thing I, I was thinking I just, about. I just, yep, I know. It's just I not, the archiving does have to happen. I totally agree. Yeah. It's just, I just don't want it to be forgotten. Mm -hmm. No, and, and the reason it can't be is we could actually set it up in a similar way that the <laughs> assessors set up their contract where they do a percentage at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So that would be the thing that I would want to approach. And I've asked Amy to give me some, um, some bullet points about what it is that really affects her work so much yeah. so that we can share that information with capital and everybody else. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's definitely get get that online permitting thing going this year. That's a that's a must. Um so and what we'll else what else did you have to projects too like the 1888 building we'll have more. So here's the thing. Remember how we did placeholders last year, Carolyn? Mm -hmm. I think we need to have update placeholders because we won't get real co cost estimates for the 1888 building for a couple of months. So if we have, you know, something out there that's a placeholder, then we can fill more information in. And so can I have one second to do an aside here? So we had a town building advisories committee meeting yesterday and went over some schematics of what that 1888 space could be. Um, we're going to meet with staff. I asked mm -hmm. to get the information so I could show it to staff so they can sort of comment and chew on it a bit. But functionally, um, the timeline for that is very tight. And we want to be able to do those cost estimates, the OPM and the architect. So they're, they're going to move forward with the schematic ideas they have just to give us some cost estimates. Mm -hmm. And then we'll circle back around and do more of that planning. I just want everybody to Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a what, what if, I'm how much with, if we do I'm what if. Yeah, I think we need that. to. I, I, you, there's I, different iterations. They're going to have comments and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I will say one other thing. The work environment is changing dramatically. So it may be that we don't have to plan for quite as many spaces if we have flex spaces built in. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that. We I, said, and Kev, uh, Trevor had a real defining moment at that meeting. And I just, I was thinking to myself, which was, it feels like we're shoehorning people in. Well, my thought is, is the workplace is changing. So it may not be quite as, as, you know, emergency like in our brains right right now. We need an but, addition, but, period. Uh, all, but Just also, um, I don't, you know, when we talk about paper, more and more everything is online. Exactly. So I don't, I mean, I agree with everybody else that we don't really need to take the paper over there. If we can turn it into electronic documents that the Secretary of State acknowledges is it fits the parameters of records retention. I don't see why we. I mean, I just I don't want that space being used for storage. We can store yeah. some other places. So the mm -hmm. pictures that we've seen were actually storage is in the basement. Yeah, um, but we sh that should be usable space. And that so should be flex space for meetings. Yeah, Julie Chalfont uh, sent around a package of all those documents mm -hmm. and asked for a comments with yeah. uh, within a week or within two weeks. Yeah. And I, I fully agree that um, there's no reason why the whole bottom of that building should be dedicated to archiving paper um, or a fair amount of it in any case. I think there's other options that can be explored. Um, you know, storage needs to be addressed in a different way than putting it in that building because it's if you put it in that building, it's going to be temporary. It's not going to be a long-term solution, and we have to have a different strategy for that. 
And the one thing, you know, I was over at that building today and, you know, I opened up the vault door and, you know, we have files from the 1700s and 1800s in that building. And I, they have to be preserved too. They, we really need to combine our vaults, our, you know, we, we really need to archive some of that stuff there. I mean, there's even, you know, in, in the old veterans room, there, there are films and paperwork on the first uh, KIA from Vietnam. And there's, there's just stuff stuck in things because everybody left and it's just left there and we need to archive. There's files from World That's War II. Project. There is big project stuff and it will take time but I just think we are when we plan on this that's why I say we need an addition because I know we're going to need space for larger meeting space and for um, other stuff down the road I won't take up the meeting on that but I'm just saying we need to um, think about I don't necessarily working with, think you're wrong with I think some other people I to, think it I think we could and I was thinking about this after you were ta after you mentioned it yesterday Trevor is just fundamentally part of how we're going to deal with senior services can really inform what we do in terms of an addition. So yep. I think, I know there's a lot, there's a lot of meat, sort of a lot of stuff going on. on that too. I do. I get that. So yeah. of one, did, did we ever figure out what happened with one stop? Are they, oh, I'll give you an update. Okay. Um, but <laughs> I have I would, a whole list. Before we go on, I would like to ask, say that I think we should ask the architects to come up with a, a fourth Option. option that doesn't include storing stuff in the in the mm -hmm. in the bottom floor okay uh, I, I, just because i, I think it, it'll give more breathing space to the building the building is supposed to be for people who are the town administrative mm -hmm. staff and you know overriding their needs so you can have paper in one building it doesn't make sense to me so that's just going to lead us to the question eventually of what we do with the paper that we do have to retain because you know yeah we have Trevor's to find a solution wrong. yeah we have to find a solution it's definitely we have to preserve these these in some cases ancient records right that you know the secretary of state's office is very concerned about but we don't functionally have the way to do that yet right you know and they're not offering so, up a large amount of money for us to find a new solution oh i'm right not up. complaining about the state no no we're so, not. i'm just making it's just, an observation it's, it's an observation of they you know i i spoke to them but there weren't really solutions out there so you know that's an investigative mm -hmm. project in the background so. and plus so, we're probably gonna have to move them if we do go forward with building that plan yeah you know I think Kevin's right. still there kevin can i ask you a couple of questions um on 2024 we have a uh an f-350 truck and a 2004 freight liner for 40,000 and 180. Is yeah, those numbers, those aren't good numbers. Those aren't good numbers, right? Those are old no. numbers. No, the uh, the 350 is gonna be probably at least 55 to 60. Um, the Freightliner, if we order shortly, we might be able to get it for like 340. Um, if we can lock in, but That's if not, Ambulance. But if not, then then we're going to be looking at a twenty percent increase, would we'll bring it up about uh, where to go about another sixty five thousand dollars. So we've got to uh, think about that a little bit. I mean, those trucks are getting like, I mean, that's as much as an ambulance. Um, oh yeah, you know, and, and then and then you're still looking at a loader on top of it too, because we push the loader off. Um, you know, that so loader is two hundred. That loader is two twenty is what's there, but you know, I I need freight liner. Uh, is that a I need dump updated truck? numbers. Yes, yes that would be correct truck, it's yeah. a 2004 uh freightliner truck is what it'd be replacing um i i just want to say we had our skims meeting last night and it's two hundred eighty-five thousand for ambulance now is that just the chassis and cab it's a 385 right 385 yeah 385 385 we, I think we we all our capital planning has been based on 250 thousand and so we've been setting money aside we have a five-year rotation mm -hmm. we got to figure out how we're gonna i mean this is truly more than 50 percent increase in one year so if this is going to be what's going to happen we got to figure out how we're going to afford our rotation i'm so, just saying that's coming up so that, kevin you, be you had the loader you're still muted you had the loader yep. That we pushed off from another year, right? Yeah, that was like two the, years uh, ago. 2002. That was 180 before. It's probably 220. You said. Well, 220. 220 was the anticipated, but I'm thinking probably closer, like probably 240, maybe 250. Again, I, I can. I'm gonna. 
tomorrow while we'll get better numbers. And then, um, so we have these that. numbers. You've got the truck and what, what condition are those vehicles in? Do you know? Um, well, the, the, the 2014 truck number 12, it's, it's pretty ragged. Um, you know, it's on its way, you know, could I get a little bit more out of it? Yeah. Um, but I get more than another plowing season out of it. Um, I may, yeah. um, no guarantees. Um, the freight line and the freight line is really tired. Yeah. That's an old, deal. um, that that's been around a long time. And the John Deere loader at the, at the transfer station, that's what the, um, technically is replacing. And then the, the loader that is at the highway garage would then be going up to the transfer station. Okay. That, that's how, the, that's how that rotation and works. And we would sell the, sell the loader that's up at the transfer station. That would be a trade in correct. Yeah. You know, and again, you know, I, I don't believe these numbers are good numbers right now. I so know. Yeah. I will, I will, I will get better numbers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We did do something. Capital did take a vote to support one of these purchases so that we could get in line for the purchase um, or get, get online um, with the intent to fund, yeah. to put this before town meeting at the next annual earlier this year. I just have to go back and look and figure out which one it was. Kevin wasn't here at the time. It was a discussion yeah. we had with Chris. And I know the uh, upgrade kitchen equipment for 120,000 at the school, I believe the school did most of that on their own. Okay. But I, I got to double check with Darius, but yeah. I know that they bought a lot. I mean, I know we, we helped with the uh, walk-in, but the, um, but I believe a lot of the other kitchen equipment they well, did the, this year and paid for. The um, dishwasher yeah. the interior had to get done. Right. Right. Um, I but mean, that the, was a public health thing. Correct. You had to have the high enough temperature. Yep. Uh, for sanitation. So, right. I think we did do some piecemeal stuff, but I'm not remembering. Yeah. Anything. And I think, well, I let's think see what Darius says. Darius did, did when I was at the meeting the other day, I know they spent quite a bit of um, school choice or other funds, um, SRAC or whatever it was on, on a lot of that kitchen stuff. Um, okay. So, so we just, just something we need to think to about and get moving on it. And, yep. and check in with folks. I just wanted to bring it up so you were aware. I, I, don't, yep. I don't think anybody on the committee is you know, the committee's changed its um, membership. I don't think so. I think there's one vacancy that the moderator hasn't filled yet. Right, but I meant in general, people are a little bit more laid back. Yeah, and familiar with thing. sort of the approach. Yes. Yep. Okay. So um, we know that there's going to be some. So the other item was the telecommuting, telecommuting policy, which I read. Um, is this the first read? So That's we're going to take read. this home so, and read and it. I, okay. I sort of the first read thing is something that, that Trevor and I got familiar with when we started working with Franklin Regional Council of Government. Yeah. It's really a familiarization thing. Right. I actually had made a couple of changes and I think I mentioned it in my email. I had made a couple of changes that I wanted council to look at. Yep. And I got an email back that he's fine with them. So I would expect um, if the board would be willing to vote it at the next meeting, that would be really helpful for us. All right, we'll look at it. Which Sounds is the 30th. Great. So it gives you time to chew on it and give yep. you comments. We don't have any appointments or resignations. Um, do you do you want to hit on? Yeah, um, I have some stuff. Some stuff to talk about. Is there any mail? I don't think there's any mail. I, didn't see I any had done there. some of that. And actually, Chris asked me this question yesterday. So a lot of times I, yes, that Chris. Kevin's um, got his hand up. Oh, sorry. Hey, Kevin Scarborough. Yeah, um, uh, just real quick one. Um, and then that way I can get out. The, the Leary lot, I've got a meeting there tomorrow morning um, around 1130, and it's with the uh, EV people for, um, yep. I'm looking at layout for, for chargings, um, you know, just so you're aware, you know, there's the standard one, that what we have right now, then there's a, a, a type two, which is a uh, one to six hour, or you've got the super high charger, which is a 20 minute one. Yeah. Um, I'm just not sure what we're looking for, how many we're looking at. Are we trying to attract people off of the highway um, to bring them in the charge and, and, and try and utilize some of our, our um, businesses in town? Are we just looking That's for sort of in town? You know, I'm not yeah. sure what, what the uh, projection of where you're looking to go to service. So um, that's just something yeah. I just want you to start thinking about, you know, one thing in bit stage, but I'm going to need yeah. to know sometime. I will say as an EV owner that um, if we're thinking about trying to get into the um, attracting people from 91 or whatever, uh, you're yep. going to need more high speed than 
you think, yeah. but they do a mix. I think it, this is Evermore, right? Yeah. The, yeah. So they're more. they're talking about level twos, which are you know okay. Um, you know, one but, to six hours, something like that. Yeah, I mean the the level twos are good for employees or or people mm -hmm. who yep. work in the buildings. Right. They plug their car in and then they work six hours, and when they come out, they've got a full load. Um, but um, unless there's a at least two high speed ones, right. you know, people are not going to come in for that reason. So they're not going to go to Leo's table and get a sandwich, et cetera, um, or Cheslick's. Um, so that's just something to think about and, and ask when, when you bring them over there. I, I, I don't think it makes sense to have anything but high speed because as people, well, I think there's a big dollar difference. There's yeah, a there's a there lift is. on the high speed. So Kevin, I have some information from them. I didn't yep. realize until late this afternoon that they had reached out to you too. I was supposed to meet with them on Friday. So I right. might Yeah, well, we are meeting on Friday, but we're meeting ahead of time. So that way me and David can go ahead and get our act together. So that way Friday will go much faster and, okay. and smoother. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That, that that's the reason why Dave and I are getting together. And then does that need to get tied in with Berkshire design on the Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, everything's going to end up having to be tied in. Exactly. And I yeah. think there's a new grant program coming through from Eversource on it. Okay. So this, these conversations that we have will help, will help the us others. down the road okay. with Berkshire Design. Sounds good. Because yeah, presently, right now, the one we we've got that one double station, but I believe that has the capability of extending out four more stations or actually eight more charge points. I believe. Okay. It's the it's whether it has the infrastructure for the high speed that I was concerned about, and I'm yeah. not educated. That one I, I don't know. I think when they were yeah. giving us those numbers, it was on the slow one that it's which is right. what we have now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what basically, we have now is not fast. Yeah. And are they thinking about maybe relocating the existing ones because they're gonna? Re no idea. This is just yeah. we're we're coming in saying okay, this is ballpark what we think we're going to be doing. You know, this is how we're going to be heading out. You know, we we're thinking about maybe, you know, maybe a little pocket park down there in the corner. We may end up doing something over here. You know, do yeah. we want to put everything right over here? That way it's close to the businesses. Or do we want to bring them a little bit further away from the business? So that way the people that are going in and other businesses aren't being, having to park farther away to get to the services. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, do, do you actually just go ahead and take that, that right side is going to take more infrastructure. But if you're looking at the lot, looking from the east to the west so if the right hand side or the north side where that long fence is if you made that your ev charging area i mean that would be would set up a whole area but still leave you enough parking for regular people that just want to be able to park and go to see the business so but again these are all things you know that come to play later on but i was just trying to get a ballpark idea where you're at but probably you would say probably what probably at least two stations which would be four charging points are you talking four charging points that would give you our four stations what will give you eight charging points i think it depends on how much of the space it's going to take because this is where well, you figure parking space with, with berkshire design we may need to add some of those elements to what we can how we sort of develop the leary lot itself right so it's like i said if you were to put it on that that side right there i mean you're only looking at what uh, less than two foot um easement is what you'd need right or not easement but a two foot area right there to be able to run all your conduit down from one to another to another so it's not like you're going to be so really all you got to do is just look at how many spots you want to yeah. utilize um and then and whether we need to have ADA we can, we can shuffle too. around within the board but obviously you know you're going to want them all together because you want all your infrastructure in the same place otherwise yeah. it's just stupid money so let's let's see what they say and we'll bring it back to yep. the board yep but like i said i just wanted you guys to be aware um and this is up like you said up and coming friday meeting but you know we're meeting ahead of time and i'm just trying to get an idea so that way you know our meeting on friday will go faster that's the thought okay so, cool. cool thank you thank you thanks kevin have a good night thanks you too um okay you're so, up and we're done um so there's let me just give you an update on some of the general stuff that's been happening um, onboarding. So we still have some staff sort shortages. So onboarding has been a little interrupted and I apologize to Chris about it today. <laughs> um, but there's some nuances and the amount, the nuances of the jobs that we're onboarding folks for and the amount of activity 
plus the redeployment to meet other staff coverage needs has slowed us down. And I wanted the board to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. We've also been in the office, we've been working on some updates, benefits management, policy development. Um, we, and we have the whole hiring process for the treasurer collector and the um, permanent town clerk positions. So Brenda's working on some calculations to put in the vacancy. And we're, we both think we should give it some flexibility in terms of the hours. So publish for 30 to 40 hours a week, mm -hmm. as opposed to limiting it to uh, just 40. Because it may be that a person that wants the job and is qualified for the job wants a little more flexibility. So mm -hmm. I think if we give ourselves a range, it gives us some freedom of movement. See who, see who so yeah. I wanted to let you know that no, this thing hasn't stopped. We did wait until after the election, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure that Natalie and Joe are going to be upset about. But we literally we didn't have the capacity to deal no, with. Good, we're, we're, you know, we're doing it, finishing yeah. that. So we're working on that. Um, there's definite projects that are impacting some of the other stuff that's going on. So I've been working on the 1888 building with the project team um, and certainly communicating with the OPM and the architect and going over some of those schematics, just internal meetings we've had, which resulted in some of the information that came out last night and will also improve the conversation with staff on Friday. Um, and we're doing that meeting on Friday so that we can have staff concentrate on what it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and we expect, to, I know Julie's going to ask them for comments like she asked other people. Yeah. And we'd like to be able to get them back to the architect by the second. I know um, they were working on it in the office today. Yeah. They were putting, put Alex and Sarah were putting together ideas. So, you know, it, it's, it's not going to look exactly the same as what we see in the concepts, but it gives yeah. people a, a familiarity with what they could expect. So, yep. and if there is a change as you requested to consider office space in the basement, mm -hmm. then that'll look a little bit different too. Yep. Um, special election. It's, I have to say, I didn't realize until I was informed yesterday and today that the new voter law is really impacting um, costs and time for the special election. So it's taking more people to comply with the new law, okay. provide the accessibility for remote voting, like mail-in voting. Mm -hmm. um, and that consequently is adding money in terms of what it's costing us for that time. Okay. It's also the cost for postage are higher. And this isn't something that the state reimburses. So you're probably going to see a request in finance as well right. for a transfer. And this I don't think anybody could have anticipated that because we didn't know what it was going to look like. Well, we were, we were hoping to group it together. I didn't realize it had to be like 90 days beforehand or something. That and the fact that well, our I space mean, is limited. did say the first yeah. week of August. She didn't say a date, but she right. said the first week of August. And I, you know. I didn't think we didn't that. have that information. Yeah. Like we hadn't gotten the information from the library folks. So, um, but I should also let you know that, um, you know, going forward, if we do have these types of things coming down the pike, we just need to be aware in terms of the budgeting. And so I think Brenda mm -hmm. and I are going to pay some pretty strict attention to that budget this year. Good. Um, just now that we've experienced it firsthand, sort of dug into it. Um, but I also want to compliment staff on how much they've stepped up to the plate and just so troubleshot things. So proud of yes. them. Um, everybody's working amazing job. Very in, in a team environment. They're you know yep. just supporting each other, and it's really been amazing to to see. Even though we had a critical issue, um, staff has really gone way beyond any expectations I might have had and I yep. want them to understand I say this to them but it's nice for the public to hear me say it mm -hmm. because they don't see the ins and outs that happen on a daily basis it's true um so grants we didn't get the community one stop I'm sorry no Denise more, and I more were money very stayed out east I don't understand why not we didn't get I have to go they back had to so they had needs out east Carolyn they I always know. have needs out but east I'm sorry, it's BS. I mean, I should, probably shouldn't. I don't say necessarily that. disagree with either one of you. I, um, you know, they they funnel you all into this one well, program. Hey, look at we all this money we have to spend. 
I know. You can't have any. Well, I'm very disappointed in the economic bill. We the only money that came out this way was for Orange for their that which was needed. Fire. That was well, that which should have been they, done. I'm so glad there's emergency. some money in West yeah. in Western Mass. Yeah, but that that was it. So this, this is, is there's a two part ask in here. Um, yes, we didn't get as much feedback as we thought we were going to get um, about why we didn't make us make the cut. So that's something that we'd like to, I would actually like to address with a contact at was, um And I may have start an opportunity. A big dig. Let's uh, just dig a hole. Uh, no, 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 no. This way. is this is the list of stuff that I want us to look at for January when we yes. go to Boston. Yes. We need to make a list. And and yeah, did you hear that, Chris? We need to Check make a list. Check it twice. Um, yep. and, and we have to solve yep. things. We, you know, I know I sound like a broken record, but we, it's at least three hundred thousand dollars that we have to go every year to the Department of Revenue and say, "Will you please take this off the 01342 zip code as the nonprofit residence and the income and all that kind of stuff?" We can't afford. I mean, if I get hit by a truck next year, you know, tomorrow, gonna be no one's going to gonna remember that. I'll take, so, I'll take up this. Even though, no, we've Carolyn, done I've it got that seared years, into I my brain. Uh, it's on <laughs> permanent tape loop. <laughs> <laughs> that that woman is going to retire you know, know the change of she'll be like you know what i need to talk to chris about, about that because it's coming up so yeah yeah i mean she's you know she's she's so wonderful to yes. talk to so she need we need to nail her down on um you know that's on our list to nail down and say how do we make this permanent because we're really worried you're gonna retire i mean there's too much money there's so much money and it, it accumulates i mean it's at least three or four hundred thousand every year that's a lot of money. It is. You're right. We can't afford not to have that money. And we so we've got to find a way to be more competitive with the East. I, well, I don't the, know so how here's to do the thing. Um, I do. When know. it comes to grants, we have this, to have better stories. Well, we have to have. A, so it's not just that. And it's we something do. that we're all the STAM group is talking about as well. I don't know if I would, I think I told you. Um, they created a new committee called Legislative a Subcommittee called Legislative Affairs. And Sean Sahowski from Apple nominated me to chair it. Go me. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say is this is actually the conversation we had a couple of weeks ago at our last stand meeting. How do we get some momentum? Because the town administrators don't always get hurt in the same way that the select boards don't always get hurt. But frankly, one of the suggestions was, why don't we take a bus use our public transportation out here, mm -hmm. take a bus to Boston, sit down and invite all of our reps to come talk to us about the things that make sense. You know, the problem you know, is, the other is thing we have is, two different busing companies and they won't, they won't four, talk actually. to each other. I know, but listen. Um, so half of us will have to go on one bus, half will have to go on the other. Well, we'll send, why don't we, we'll send, send you guys chair, out on your own bus. Since yeah. you're chairing this, okay? Why don't we invite the new auditor out to follow mm -hmm. up on Suzanne Bump's report? Or we see if we could set up a meeting in Boston during this during the conference because mm -hmm. well, we've yes. talked about that too. We should we should be doing that. It should be on our list too. But inviting the the new auditor wouldn't be. Well, it's not the sure. worst thing because the auditor has been very helpful in the past. Suzanne right. was great. But that's why okay. I, I think we should invite him, invite her out to hang out with us in December, and then then follow up in January. So this is what I'm talking about is. These are, I mean, we're, we're trying to generate ideas as professional groups. You guys have a political pull that we don't have as professional, but functionally we work together as groups. And so it makes sense for us to basically parlay whatever conversations we can have with what you guys are doing. So what I would, my, my sort of ask in, in the midst of all of this is I need some capacity so that I can work on this because I really think I, it could benefit. I absolutely you. agree with that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, came up when I was doing the um, Selectman's um, nomination, uh, executive board nominations, that whole day um, I interviewed, you know, Andy Hodgelin, who's going to be our new president and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And he already down. agreed to meet with us to have meetings in Boston. So we need to start sending out emails to um, our Franklin members that are coming, Franklin County Select Board members. So we have a small meeting. Mm -hmm. And then Andy already agreed that he would do the Western Mass all Great. four county meeting. Yeah. So, and Isabel- We are starting to plan that. 
another one too. Right, and spring. Isabel, who is is you know supported us for that day, is also the one that supports. She does. She stuff. helped us with that. And so she's going to she set up a meeting on the schedule so that it will be published. Yeah. And so we need to follow up on that. You know, I know. I, so that's a select board that. thing. You it guys is. need to. It is. We I know, but that's on one that. of the things we're that we have, right. It's being driven by us. Trevor, because so if we have consent, it, like I know. concurrent things going, and then it, it gives us more of a voice. But functionally, the biggest complaint from my STEM colleagues is we have no voice. Nobody hears what we say except we don't have any the population. Group, the small group. I shouldn't say nobody. Don't don't quote me. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean our legislators nobody. do our an amazing job. Listen to us. We have they really good reps. Go to bat for they, us. every time. They are amazing. Absolutely. But not everybody has the same momentum with their reps that we it's a, Yeah, it's a tough job to be the senator for a small yes, rural it is. district. It is. And, and she's you know, got how many towns? 26 towns or something yeah. like that. And, and they took the her same. away from me. I'm very upset. You work and work and work. And then, you know, you fair. basically get kicked in the teeth at the last second. Yeah. And, uh, and, and she's at the mercy of her colleagues. Too. I yeah. know. That's so what I mean. On, I don't know how I, to break that cycle and say, like, we have, I we have think shovels we in the noise. ground, massive need for sewer infrastructure money. This is totally we federal. We don't compete applied. with the SL, SRF funds like everyone else. We does. can't. So we can't make those what payments. I'm saying is, is I'm not trying to throw pain at everybody. I'm just saying that. So we've experienced a lack of response with grants. Um, we know as a STAM group and as mass managers that we need to get more momentum mm -hmm. and you guys know from your political work as select board members that that's the same thing you face in your group it is so it is. we're all the only, together the only way you get voices is if you go statewide yeah and you we and you guys out, have gotten some that's why i that. always go to the cape cape meetings mm -hmm. because They're very the cape similar is very similar to us and you know we reach out and then you got some of the you know south shore north shore communities that are, would be willing to work with us absolutely and, and so that's why you know i volunteer the stuff so we can have connections with people and we that's what we have to do we just have to focus on that and, and say that this is really and so this critical. is what i mean we need yeah. to some of these other projects that we've been doing and some of this other work i think now that covid is yeah it's an epidemic it's still here but I think we need to start thinking about shifting our priorities to some of the things that are really going to hit us between the eyes in the next six months. Yep. Well, that's why we're trying to do this emergency. We you know we started in August. We're trans, you know, we're trying to refocus our emergency preparedness, we're trying to refocus some of our energies that were just taken over by COVID. And to everybody's benefit is what was done to reach out to the other libraries. I mean, I that's its own amazing there. thing. You know just coming together was it 12 mm -hmm. i think it's 12 12 li 12 towns coming together to really put that ask forward it may not look like much to the rest of the world but for those of us that work in small towns we see the momentum of that mm -hmm. and it it's to, it's to your credit well that it's you guys it's started 14 that. it's 14 senators so okay what are we doing we got to keep following up and, and that's the thing drop keep, the ball mm -hmm. keeping that momentum moving i'm working on a governor elect lieutenant governor elect letter yeah yeah and kim, we did talk we did oh, talk you. to kim driscoll and and say was awesome. um you know arpa is a federal a federal um program and the, the 11 to 14 percent of massachusetts residents who live in the rural west um need their 10 to 14 percent and yeah. she her response was kind of well you know we don't want to do essentially quota but the reality is if we well, don't, we if, don't do if we're 14 we percent do and we don't even get two percent then there's something wrong there's something wrong with those numbers we yeah. never 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 get the money it always stays but that's why i think we. i don't say never but i'm saying like i mean we're grateful for what joe got us this year Absolutely. and what natalie does for oh, yeah. us in the the rural school thing i mean we they and the knock collaboration it out of the park. amongst them and their yeah. peers it's just as as okay. a comparison to federal money coming in and nothing coming west when we have critical need and like, so we're all just, a bro it's a broken it, record it that we all say but one of the things that my stam colleagues brought up because we talked about it when we were sort of developing what we were going to approach in our legislative affairs subcommittee meetings and mma doesn't always advocate for small towns mm -hmm. so it really leaves it on us to do that advocacy and to some extent i think 
if you guys do what was just discussed, collaborating with mm -hmm. the Cape, working with the libraries, you know, getting together with the communities that, that we, that are, are in parity with our size and our activity level. Um, that's a good way to move forward, but we need to make some noise about it. And I actually, I talked to the STAM vice president about it at that meeting. And she looked at me and she goes, if we all show up, mm -hmm. it's yeah. harder to ignore you know, a group you know what's a black that's hole? sitting in the middle of the state house. Yeah. You know, it's a black hole because, you know, it's to me, you know, it's, you, it's natural to work with the Cape, but it's also natural to work with central mass. And, I, and I'm telling you, it's like a black hole. So if you can use STAM to help us generate connections to, I mean, because for whatever reason. Oh, Sterling, I just, Princeton, they're all yeah, our size. They're all the same. Yeah, but I don't really, I mean, so I, actually that's I don't what, that's really what's know happened. anybody. That's Good. what's happened. Some of the group um, in the subcommittee are from Central Mass. Perfect. Because they have the same issues they, we do. They, they're the yeah, identical they're, towns they to us. They don't really participate. And so if you can drag them out. Actually, they reached out because they saw it. And I was so, Good. you know, I, well, I give really Sean a really. Because it is like a black hole. It is when, a black hole. When you go to state meetings, there's no one ever from Central Mass. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, the Berkshires, you know, I connect. Sure. And, and, yeah. I've, and because Jim, of the Homeland Jim's Security, really I see, and... you know, people. And, and other things, but you never have people from Central Mass. So we have two members that I can remember off the top of my head. So um, if we can if we can generate connections with them, that's right. going to be huge because yeah. and maybe that means that it is generates somebody more that we don't get more members. The more population, yeah. the more population we can group together. But there's more. The better we are. There's more communities that have more of a profile yeah. like ours, and we and they don't mm -hmm. do anything. And we can like, find it. Find so way to you know what? I'll yeah. take that back to the the group and right. talk to them about because it. But I mean, I don't see them, and 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 this is over. This I've is just not started seeing just them. in the last couple of years. Yeah. I'm I'm talking about twenty years plus. You're right. Of going to statewide meetings and they just don't show up. So how do we reach them? And that's that's what. So this couple conversation minutes, right? helps me. Yeah. A couple more I know. Minutes. But yeah. functionally, I just want you to be aware that that's a capacity thing that I really think could improve our ability to compete. It may not get us as far as we would like it to, but it's the beginnings of a conversation that Stam really hasn't had in that venue before. And we also tentatively, well, we temporarily elected somebody to go to the RPAC meetings. That's a direct representative from Stam. Mm -hmm. And I think at the, the next annual meeting, we're going to do an election, an official election to have somebody cover that on a regular right. basis. So that's just work that I want you to be aware of because I need to funnel some energy toward it. Because well, I, think it I still think us. you should invite the new auditor out to follow up on Suzanne Bumps because we were featured we'll, in her report. We'll keep working on all that. Anything else? Um, I'm gonna I just up. wanted, so there's, I wanted to let people know. There seems to be an expectation that an immediate response needs to happen for emails and drop-ins. Can't. And it's, can't. it's really, really difficult work. with the amount of work in there. And um, also, I just reiterate, when you send the email to all three of us, we really, it is a violation of open meeting law if we respond. And so it's just, if you want to email us and email through us. Through Casey. In, through Casey, and she will distribute it to us. So I, I just, to follow up with that, what I've been doing lately is in an effort to sort of keep you in tune with some of the activity that's going on, I'm blind carbon copying you. And I know that means a lot of email. On the other hand, it also, you you then see that yeah, these are some of the things goes that are happening in the office. Works. Yeah. And works. I do share when I get these questions yeah. and stuff, I share with the board in a blind carbon copy fashion, well, what I can say at the moment and whether I have to get back to people with more information. And people just need to be patient because there's just there's only so many hours in a day and not enough staff to do all the work they have to do. So if it takes you a couple days to get back to somebody, that's what it takes. So yeah, that's I mean, it for me. I was just thinking of if we could come up with some boilerplate that Auto said, reply. yeah, uh, that says, you know, your your email has been received and and you know just so that they okay they I, they actually got it. Mm. Doesn't mean that they expect 
you know, an immediate response to the specifics, but at least an acknowledgement, but I know it's difficult. I usually so. acknowledge them. Um, mm -hmm. Every once in a while, I miss something. Like I miss something oh, that was related to, yeah. you know. 50 emails in a day. Mm -hmm. But I, I do to try bottom. to give them something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, and that's not lost. On and I appreciate the BCC when you do that, because yeah. then we know yes. that, yes, this person has been at least acknowledged. Yeah. Um, sometimes people feel, even at the local level, that um, government, they don't care about me, yeah. um, but if they get a, a relatively quick response that even says, we did get your email. We do hear you, because we do. Um, right. we do that, that sometimes goes a long way towards letting them be patient. Um, so let, you know, let's continue so to think about it. We, we try to do that, but yeah. I just want people to know that we yep. do our best. So that's enough for me. Okay, Perfect. so my final two things is I'm still waiting to hear about um, betterments and when is our when is our hearing on the, the, the rate? I just sent an 30th. email out to Justin. 30th of November. Of November. Of November. I just was checking my calendar and I wasn't sure yeah. if it was in there. So. Yeah, so 30th. I would like to forward on that info to um, DA that we got. So, oh, so they okay. have the plans okay. and mm -hmm. just, you know, say this, these are our kind of this is what we're thinking at the moment, because I don't think they have any idea what we're thinking at the moment. So okay. at I least didn't... they'd have it and, you know, whatever. That can help inform their discussions. With Did we get anything talking. more about from DPC about the cost estimate? Yes. Yes. Okay, because I haven't seen that. I, well, I haven't sent it out. I was going to oh. ask him what, what he wanted me to do with yeah, it. Yeah, send, send it out okay, to so... everybody. And Yeah, okay. I mean, if, yeah, yeah, I mean, as far as sending it to DA, you know. We, here first. Yeah, yeah here. Yeah, sure. yeah. we for start sure. here. Let Tim look at it. Yeah. And okay. Carolyn. So I'll send it to DA. No, send send us send the cost the, estimate. I'll send it to yeah. you. Well, yeah, yeah I'll send, send it, it to you Tim guys first. But, Tim, but share that you could share the drawings and stuff, and yeah. yeah, or I can communicate with Matt once I get it. And Please. I did ask uh, and Eric about yeah. talking to you individually. Yeah. Um, but I sent an email out and asked whether they should attend the thirtieth. Mm -hmm. Basically, what I'm trying to do is find out what are the legal what are the legal um, paths to betterment charges. Mm -hmm. I mean. How do you how do you assign them? Right, and there's probably two or three, and you know, and then also, what is the effect of, you know, um, on the ratepayer if, uh, you know, we move forward like we did last time versus you know if we move forward in a different way, because I I do think there's a huge impact if we don't find a way to, not borrow money, <laughs> so, uh, it's critical to this whole discussion. Okay. All right. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. I'll make, make that, that motion. motion. No, I'll <laughs> second it. <laughs> we'll, All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, I hope aye. everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving everybody. everybody. Enjoy your families and.